Hello my friends in how to paint series. Today I am going to show you my way of white and worn camo painting. But before we start as a reminder of what we left off in the previous episode. By the way, if you are new, check the previous videos from working on King Tiger and other projects that I published on this channel. Of course, it will be helpful to subscribe to the channel to have reminders of new movies. Ok, as I mentioned before, I'm using my 2016 model as a painting template. Apart from that, I draw conclusions from other models that I have made in winter painting. Some have more and other less damaged paint coating, but I always try to find some inspiration by looking at the model. Here is a short overview of my work in recent years. Before I even start painting properly, I covered a few elements with masking tape. It's not really necessary, but I didn't want to repaint them into the right color. Only the fender line should be marked, because I assume that the vehicle is starting my winter adventure with a full set of fenders. The first thing you need to do is cover the model with easy chipping medium which has no intense perfumed smell. The bottle is fitted with an atomizer so you can use the product straight from the bottle if you don't want to get your airbrush dirty. Remember that the product is not suitable for brush painters because you will activate it simultaneously with brush strokes. Waiting for it to dry completely, I mounted the model on a rotating element from Octopus Jig, which made it easier for me to operate the model during work. It holds on enough, but not enough to turn it upside down. Of course, you can do this and squeeze the model very tightly, but it's not necessary. After the first layer is dry, it's worth applying the second one to make sure that all surfaces will be covered with this product. The main color will be flat white mixed with buff. It's a proven mixture that I will dilute with the usual Tamiya thinner. White can also be mixed with blue to have a colder shade, but in the case of this model I won't use it. I'm showing you only for information if you need to use something like this on your model. I add about 5 drops of the thinner and the paint is applied in a 10 to 1 ratio. I used to use water because I heard somewhere that thanks to it the paint is weaker in adherence to the surface, but I didn't notice that this was actually happening. So don't believe everything you hear on the internet. You need to check it by yourself. Now you can clearly see the difference between pure white and mixture with buff. Let's start the painting. As you can see, the paint layer is quite thin and I don't cover the entire surface perfectly. It all depends on the effect you want to achieve. If, like here, the camo will be destroyed and a large part of the summer camo will be visible, there is no need to cover all surface perfectly. However, if the vehicle will be completely white or the white surface would account for at least 80% of the model, then you really need to focus on better coverage of each element. In some places you can apply a lot of paint to make coating more saturated with color. But you have to remember one very important thing that I forgot. Between the first and second layer of paint, it's worth applying another layer of chipping medium. It will make it easier for you to take the next step. Of course it's also possible without it, but it will be more difficult and may fail in some places.
Before I started filming this step I did one side of the model because I had to wait until my camera battery was charged. So this is how it will look like in a moment on the entire model. This step is the most important part of the entire winter camo painting in the version you see here. For this we need water, an old brush, a toothpick or some other sharp tool and a paper towel. The method is known to all modelers. Let's soak a given fragment of the model and wait a few moments. It's better to work on small parts. If we wet a larger piece, we may not be able to work on it before the water dries and thus the medium under the paint will cease to work. The most important thing is diversity, which is not difficult to find. There is no 100% recipe for what this is supposed to look like. It seems to me that it's simply experience and a matter of individual taste and feeling. And now you can see exactly what I said about the additional value of the medium. In some places it took me a while to decay, the paint softened and allowed some scratches. Also the spare tracks on the turret were lightly covered in white paint and need to be scratched a bit. The effect is great and will be much better after the weathering. And one more important thing is to change the water in which we dip the brush, because at certain point it becomes so dirty with paint that it becomes a filter, which is easy to see on white paint.
You can, but you don't have to. It will undoubtedly add some effects to the coating we've made, but don't overdo it because we will be doing general weathering later. You have to remember this. So, what is oil paint rendering? I think that I will use the explanation that Michael Rinaldi showed in his book Tank Art Part 1. So he wrote that rendering is defined for illustration as maximizing a drawing's level of information for the viewer, which is often used to visualize a product's physical elements. In short, we can make sure that the surface of the model is not uniform, boring or expressionless. Thanks to additional painting effects we can even tell the story of the vehicle we are building. That's how I feel it. On my King Tiger I added some color to the spare trucks but also to the armor surfaces. Maybe it's not very visible and it's possible that it's my mistake because I used too light base paint, but looking at the model I can see the difference. In a moment I will do some fun with acrylic paints, then the level of detailing of the paint coating will increase even more. The last step. We do some chipping and mapping with acrylic paints. As for me, both of these terms are very close to each other when it comes to finishing winter camo, so you will see for a moment how easy it is to go from one to the other. And you will immediately see how cool the plain white paint does the job on the damaged paintwork. Chipping as chipping, small irregular color points. Mapping is already larger surfaces with irregular shapes such as a geographic map with the edges of different areas and here you can do it several times by applying differently diluted paints, layer on layer. Even if it doesn't look good at first glance, later with weathering everything will align and it will be an interesting effect on the model. Now it's a good time to mention my patrons who joined the Cold Demons PL team. Thank you guys so much. If you also want to be my patron, check what benefits you can have. For now I can say that you can find interesting materials there as well as access to videos. 
Now you can watch the next episode about the work on the King Tiger project without any ads. In addition I report on other projects that I work on at the same time and which I show in public only for my patrons. If you would like to see them, don't waste your time and join the team. You can find the link in the description and at the end of this video. Do you see what I see? The model gets more and more refined with each episode, doesn't it? After today's work you can see how much there will be to watch on it. I'm sure it will be awesome. That's all I wanted to show you today. Hope you find it useful for painting the models and you had a good time watching. If so, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please share it with your friends and make sure that they like and subscribe and let them know that I'm waiting on my Patreon site. You can increase the prosperity of this channel and make me feel better. Thank you very much and see you next time. Cheers!